Hi, my name is John Dubois, and welcome to Vegan Bible Essentials. And today I would like to discuss um, Job in chapter 12, when Job was talking to the Lord and, and telling how great and, and wonderful the Lord is. And I would like to switch over from there to to um, Job chapter 39, when the Lord speaks of the animals and such things and how great he made these animals. Now, with God, God speaking of how great these animals are, he must have a um, a great feeling towards these animals, a warm, compassionate spirit towards the animals he has made upon this earth. So why would a God that has such a compassionate and merciful spirit uh, not spare his animals, or not want to, rather? But here we, we will uh, begin in Job chapter 12 and discuss how um, Job talks about the God and um, and how he has made the beast and and with what with which qualities and and all that he has made these animals so let me begin by reading and we can get a, uh, a better understanding here and then switch over to the latter part of Job and read that okay in Job chapter 12, beginning, and Job answered and said, No doubt, but we are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you, and am not inferior to you. Yea, who knoweth not such things as these? I am as one mocked of his neighbor, who calleth upon God, and he answers him, the just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised. And the thought of him that is at ease. The tabernacle of robbers prosper, and they that provoke God are secure, into whose hand God bringeth abundantly. But ask now the beast. Here we get to the beast and uh, the animals, rather and how Job is describing them. And they shall teach thee, but ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, the birds, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought these, or hath built these, or made these? In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? Of course, and the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind is in God, correct? Doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meats? Now let's read this again. It says meat here. But that word meat in the Bible is vegetables are are described as food. It's not necessarily meat in the in the meaning of meat. It's the unless it specifically says so. But this term here should be made food. Doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his food? With the ancient is wisdom and the length of days understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Behold, he breaketh down, and it cannot be built again. He shutteth up a man, and there can be no opening. Behold, he withholdeth the waters, and they dry up. Also he sendeth them out, and they overturn the earth. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and deceiver are his. He leadeth counselors away, spoiled, and make the judges fools. He looseth the bonds of kings and girdeth their loins with a girdle. He leadeth princes away, spoiled and overthroweth the mighty. He removeth away with the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the age. He poureth contempt upon princes and weakeneth the strengths of the mighty. He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. He increaseth the nations and destroyeth them. He enlargeth the nations and straighteneth them again. 
He take away the heart. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth, and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. They grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Okay, that's the end of chapter twelve of Job. How God, how Job is describing God, his strength, his wisdom, and what God can do. Is that correct, yes? And it, any. And he says, who is the life and who is the soul of mankind and animals? Who do they belong to? And of course, the answer, we all belong to God. Okay, let's switch over here to the end now, where God interjects and starts talking uh, to Job, I believe it is. And, okay. All right, let's begin in, in chapter 39 so we can know how God describes his animals and such things with great um, with great uh, attributes here that uh, in, in telling how great he's made his animals and everything. Okay, let me go ahead and read and then we can get a, a greater understanding. Knoweth thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth now he's telling Job this. Or canst thou mark with the hinds do calve? Canst thou number the months that they fulfill? Or knoweth thou the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking. They grow up with corn, they go forth and return not unto them. Who hath sent out the wild ass free? Or who hath loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings? He scorneth the multitude of the city, neither regardeth he the crying of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. With the unicorn, will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? Or will he harrow the valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him because his strength is great? Or wilt thou leave thy labor to him? Wilt thou believe him that he will bring home thy seed and gather it into thy barn? Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feather unto the ostrich, which leaveth her eggs in the earth, and warmeth them in dust, and forgetteth that the foot may crush them, or that the wild beast may break them. She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear. Because God hath deprived her of wisdom, neither hath he imparted to her understanding. What time she lifted up herself on high, she scorneth the horse and his rider. Hast thou given the horse strength? Hast thou clothed his neck with thunder? And this describes how great God has made the horse, and how he's describing how great he's made the horse. Canst thou make him afraid as a grasshopper, or the glory? The glory of his nostrils is terrible. He paused in the valley and rejoiceth rejoices in his strength. He goeth on to meet the armed men. He mocketh at fear and is not affrighted, neither turneth he back from the sword. The quiver bradleth against him, the glittering spear and the shield. He swalloweth the ground with fierceness and rage, neither believeth he that it it is the sound of the trumpets. He saith among the trumpets, Ha, ha, and he smelleth the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. Doth the hawk fly by thy wisdom and stretch her wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? He's talking about two different birds here, a hawk and then talking about an eagle the great wonderful birds that God has made. 
Okay, now the eagle, she dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock in the strong place. From thence she seeketh to pray, and her eyes behold far off. Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. Now that's the end of chapter 39. Now there is some other good things here, how God uh, describes uh, his wonderful creatures he has made, the, the wonderful animals on the earth. And we need to take this into account that God has made such wonderful things, wonderful animals upon this earth, that in God is the compassion and mercy to describe such great animals that's abundant upon this earth with great attributes and great things and how strong and excellent his animals are. So we need to take this into consideration that God has compassion and mercy even upon his animals, and us too. Let's always keep that in, into consideration, that God has made such great creatures upon this earth along with us to live here with us, not for us to take advantage of, but to live here with. And that's why God has made them, not, not to torture, not to eat, not to destroy, but to learn from to have with our companions. We have dogs and cats and such things as companions with us in our homes. And we don't eat those. Why should we eat others? Please, if you will, go vegan and have compassion and mercy and, and help the earth. When you go vegan, you're helping the earth, the atmosphere, the climate. Uh, you contributing to a greater and better um, worldwide uh, worldwide thing that's that makes a cleaner and better earth even okay okay this is vegan bible essential seven and thank you for listening to me today and bye bye